And welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Patrick Cristiano, your host, the publisher of TheaterLife.com, a website for theater bus covering Broadway and off-Broadway theater. And I have a really special guest. It's always special whenever Jane Sherman comes into the studio. Jane Sherman, theater producer and one of my dear friends. Thank you so much for coming. My pleasure, Patrick. Oh, I love seeing you. <laughs> it's so much fun to have you. Only for you do I come on this side of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> really? I didn't know that. <laughs> and we have Truman. He's not, he's down here with us, too. But, uh, he's, he's in her side. Jane, for, for you people who don't know who Jane is, she's a major theater producer, a Tony Award winner for Kinky Boots. She's done television i mean one of her television shows back in the i don't know 90s. in the life when did in you the life television i think we finished it up the but when did you start it oh god you're going to test my memory now in the yes in, 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 in the, the, in the, the 70s. 70s i saw this show in the 70s and it profoundly affected my life and my journey so i always for that reason you're one of my favorite people on the planet well, thank you <laughs> and you know it's still accessible when we finished, when there were, you know, In the Life started because there was nothing on television right. that showed real gay people right, and right. their issues. And so um, when the time had come that it wasn't as necessary anymore, instead of just closing up shop, we gifted it to the UCLA Legacy Project. So they can, you can see it how? You can. There is there, And we helped raise some funds to expedite their getting it all set up. And there is a um, hub there where anybody can view. You have to go. Do you have to go to the? Yeah, you go to the UCLA Legacy. But you can get it online. Yes, online. Oh, that's fabulous. Online, and so teachers and filmmakers and students ah. and anybody can access it. And not only is it twenty years of magazine format stories about real people, but it's. 5,000 hours of B-roll, 6,000 hours of B-roll. <laughs> it is a visual document, documentation of the LGBTQ movement that doesn't exist anywhere else. Wow. I mean, we often, even when we were broadcasting, would have major news outlets come to us and say, do you have any footage on X subject? So, so, you, so you did it for, for 20 years? That's, that's I did it for reason. about 15 and then you, you passed it off, sort of? Yeah, we, it was time. You know, at that point, we were beginning to see more programming on right. mainstream media. So. But anyway, we, we don't want to go, we, we didn't come here to, to digress on to history because you have, you're always doing something. Mm -hmm. uh, you never stop, which is amazing to me. It's films or television and theater is, I think, probably your first love. I don't know. But you have a new play you're bringing in, yes. Danny in the Deep Blue Sea, uh, a Stanley. John Patrick Stanley, uh, you know, John Patrick uh, Pulse, Stanley, yeah. Stanley, 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 one of my, <laughs> duh, okay. early in the morning, but it's not that early. Uh, anyway, Pulitzer Prize winner for Doubt, and you have created a, a new award that they gave this year at the Hamptons International Film Festival. Yes. Tell us about it. What, well, we just finished the festival last night, and um, I've been going and involved with the festival on some levels since it started 31 years ago. And, you know, I've seen these different awards come for different kinds of, of film competitions. And I said to them, what would be involved to, to give an award? And they said, you know, if you're really willing to fund it, that's, that's it. it. So we started this year. And because I didn't want to name it just for me, we named it the Scherzum Award because my wife's name is Zum and mine is Sherman. Um, <laughs> that's and, cute. I previewed a number of films and then watched some during the festival, and we were thrilled to give the award to Rustin. Oh my God, that film was marvelous. They did an amazing job, and interestingly, we talked about in the life television years ago. We actually did a piece on Bayard Rustin, but people don't know who. Do he people was. tell tell them people don't know who they are? Yeah, is. he he was really Martin Luther King's right hand man, but he was much more than that. He really, in some ways, inspired King to do certain things, including the March on Washington. And he was a quasi-open homosexual, which was unheard of in those days, particularly in those communities. Right. And so it's a very important story. I was thrilled that this was the first award that we were giving because it's exactly the kind of story that we want to foster right. and the submissions that we want to see come into the festival um, because 
it puts a face on things and it shows people who people are and that's how you affect change. Um, we also gave a second small that, award. That is why I love that you gave a second one too. Go ahead. Yeah. But we gave a, a, a small second award because there were a number of films this year that qualified for the competition. And there was a small documentary about a camp in Canada that welcomes and is for young, queer, questioning kids, some transitioning, some gay, and it gives them an environment where they're free to be themselves and explore. And it was just a very upbeat, positive piece. Again, showing people the real people. You know, you see so much in the news or read, and it's all out there. But this is, you see real kids, and you see what they're going through in their lives. I, I, this is wonderful. And you, you gave an extra yes, amount, so we could give a, yeah, exactly. a kind of an honorary, honorary the second award. One, yeah. 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 Uh, but, but Rustin was amazing. Was. And you had the cast was stunning, besides Coleman Domingo, who's just grown yeah. tremendously since the early days. But now you've got this new project that you're bringing Danny in the Deep Blue Sea, the Shanley play, uh, that has, I didn't see it. I've never seen it done. I hadn't seen it. I hadn't seen it in its original form. Now, I've seen lots of scenes in my acting classes over the years. I mean, everybody wants to do some of that stuff or try to do yeah. it anyway. Well, Mark Berger, who I know from, from his work with David Binder, and I, I've worked with David Binder for years, is the lead producer on this, and he came to me first and said, "Well, let, let's tell everyone it's going to be at the Lucy Lear Tell them. Do you know the dates?" Um, we be, I begin. We believe begin previews the thirtieth or thirty first of, of October. So it's almost about to start previews right. at, the, at the Lucy Lear Tell on Christopher Street in right. the Village. And I love the idea of it being an off Broadway play. I think that ten weeks only. I just want to get that in. Ten, ten weeks only. And it's selling amazingly well. Well, you have you have two this this uh, do, uh, the woman that's in it, Aubrey Plaza. Well, she, she's a, uh, from the Upright Citizens Brigade, and, right, she, and she, she, does... she was in the office. She was in a number of things. She's ex she's hosted the Independent Spirit Awards. She is an amazing draw. She's I mean, selling tickets. Yes, I knew she would sell tickets. I don't think you any of us know knew how much so. so. <laughs> I, I don't think any of us knew how much so. Um, but also Christopher Abbott, who has a following, and I think. But this is her her theatrical debut. It's her so. Theatrical debut, but I think there's also something else here. I think that the time has come where off Broadway can become commercially viable again. You know how so? Well, you know I do a lot of Broadway. You know I understand the costs, and I think they're, you know, wonderful things that, that are being mm -hmm. done. But there are people that just can't do that as often, even with discounted tickets that are out there. And I think the time is ripe for off Broadway. I mean, there are shows that are now playing long runs off Broadway and doing well. And I think people want to be in their communities as well as well even beyond the money of it this is a this is a marvelous play yes. that, that that has a message about connection and about the need for connection mm -hmm. uh and it's one of his early plays yes. uh Shanley has won the pulitzer prize for doubt right. uh he wrote the screenplay for moonstruck which was another fabulous right. movie uh he, he directed doubt himself he mm -hmm. he's a very, very talented prolific guy. writer very too, talented very talented. I, I love his stuff. Uh, yeah. I've never seen a full production of this. I'm excited. I, I think a lot of people are excited. I know I am, but I mean, other people, it's interesting because people have said to me recently, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, oh, what are you doing this season? Are you doing something this season? And I said, yes, but I'm actually doing it off-Broadway. And when I tell them what it is, eight out of 10 of them are saying, oh, I just got tickets for that. Really? Before yeah. you, before they even knew you were involved? Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Then. They don't buy on me. They buy on Aubrey Plaza, on Christopher Abbott. Yeah, but your friends will buy on you is what I meant. They, yes. Well, I, mean, yes. I mean, if you've got your doing something, they're going to support you, aren't they? One hopes. <laughs> Hope is eternal, right? right. <laughs> uh, so who's directing it? Jeff Ward. Jeff Ward, I don't know his work. Um, well, you're going to see it on stage, and it's going to be beautiful. And 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 the the guy again is Christopher Abbott. Abbott. Mm -hmm. 
and he's he, done a lot of film work. And he's also he's also I see that he's done he's uh, 2011 made his Broadway debut in the House of Blue Leaves, mm -hmm. uh, and he's got lots of theater credits at the Signature, um, where we're born, at the Rattlestick, the Rose Tattoo, and. Right. Fool for Love at Williamstown Theater. So he's really got a, yeah. a good theater. Yeah, he's theater. got good stage cred. And so how did you, how, how did these things come to you? Well, in this instance, it came to me from somebody I knew, which is usually the way it comes, okay? I, Mark used to work with David Binder. Uh, when he went out on his own, uh, I helped out with a small film he did. I like the way he operates. He's young, he's got fresh ideas. And he came to me on this and said, you know, would you do this? I'm coming to you first, whatever. And I said, sure. <laughs> did, did you know the play before? Did you, did I didn't really know the play. So you, I knew of course of it, you read but it, I right? didn't know it. I hadn't, I hadn't seen it. And what, 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 what did you like about the play in particular? I liked the play because I mean, it, it falls within that realm of what I look to do. It's about connection. It's about acceptance. It's about all those things that I like. And I really believe that these two actors, but particularly Aubrey, would be a draw. Mm -hmm. I never imagined how big a draw they would be. Do, you mean we're going to have trouble getting tickets? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you I'm hear that? Can I have trouble buy getting tickets, tickets now? I'm, you know, now, how do we get tickets? Wood. How do we get tickets? How do we tell, tell everyone they go were? online? Okay. Um, Danny in the Deep Blue Sea, I think. At the Lord Tell. Mm -hmm. And we'll put something on our website, of course, too. That's great. Theaterlife.com. <laughs> And again, it's and I think also today ticks because we're doing the majority of our advertising and marketing through today ticks, which is very unusual, but it's clearly working. So. That's wonderful. Now, now um, after this uh, gets finished, you you've got some other things in the works too that are happening that you can't talk too much about. We can tease. Right. Right. We um, I'm going to be involved with, it's a nonprofit production at the Hayes Theater, Second Stages Hayes Theater, in the spring, um, a new play by Paula Vogel called The Mother, and it will star Jessica Lang and... Jessica Lang is going to be the mother in this in Paula Vogel's play? Not exactly, you'll see. Okay. And, and, and Jim Parsons. And Jim Parsons, okay, but we, we, we'll, you're going to come back and we'll talk about that Absolutely. later. Absolutely. At, 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 an, at another time. Sure. Yeah. And so what this, the um, the award that you created at the film festival, let's talk a little bit more about the stuff that you saw at the film festival that sure. you liked besides the, the, uh, the award winning shows, because you get to see everything and yeah. I, I, I only saw a few things. Well, um, one, one of the contenders for the award was a film from Spain, I believe. Um, I saw it a while ago because I screened it called 20,000 Bees, 20,000 Species of Bees. And it's a lovely um, piece about a young boy who's, I mean, really young, who's beginning to identify as trans. I mean, it's not articulated that way, but it's very clear of what's mm -hmm. happened. And he's beginning to take a, a, another identity as well. And it's a, a really beautiful piece. Um, there's a comedy drama, a British film called Chuck Chuck Baby, about two women who had been friends in high school and there had been a flirtation, but nothing really happened. One of them lives in the town that they grew up in and she's married to this oaf of a guy who's now with somebody else and they're all in the same house. And this other woman comes back and it takes, it's, it, and the support of her factory workers is wonderful. I mean, it was a good year to, to start this because there were good choices. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you had a, you had a, you had a lot of things to choose from. And, yeah. and you, and you, you screened Right, and, and one of the things that, that I stipulated is that in a year where there aren't any films or where there are films that I don't feel meet the criteria mm -hmm. of, of giving really an award. putting the right kind of right. face, et cetera, um, that the money can be held by the festival and then next year we'll have a bigger pot. So like if someone doesn't win an award, the next year it'll be 10,000? Could be, sure. Oh, that's, that's very, I like that. Or two awards or, you know. Oh, exactly. I, I love that idea. That's really, I, yeah. that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. And if this works, we'll up the, up the ante too. Yeah. Now, now besides, um, all, all the uh, 
the gay and lesbian films and all that stuff. What about some of the commercial films? Did you did, I, did I, you see the closing film last night? Maestro? I did. I saw Maestro last night. Had you seen it before? No. Or it was the first time? First time. What's your feeling? Did you see it? Yes. You know, I thought it was an interesting depiction. Um, and it turns out that they had his three children who are now serious grown-ups. I mean, you know, they're not youngsters. Right. Um, there for the Q&A. And it really kind of had a frenetic sense to it that showed, you know, kind of the energy. You're talking about the film. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, for, uh, to show people about Leonard Bernstein. Um, so, you know, the production's beautiful. Isn't it? Produ yeah. yeah, the production's beautiful, performances. Um, How'd you feel about the nose? You know... Because it bothered me. It did me. something with the years too. It, it bothered me for some. I mean, it, I I felt like it was too much that it took away from it that you kept seeing it and thing. And I thought the essence of it would have been better as opposed to really going for the real thing. I I think that his interpretation he overcomes was, it. Yes. Yeah. I think you know he he was looking for a certain way to present Leonard Bernstein, mm -hmm. and it was a little frenetic for me as well. Yeah. Um, I'm not but it is the underbelly of who the man is. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I suspect because Bradley Cooper has this distinctive look, you know, movie star look, that he needed to step away from that. Yeah, but he could have still have without making it the exact maybe, same nose. Maybe, but you know, Nicole Kidman did the same thing in The Hours mm -hmm. and got a lot of flack for that too. So... And when Elizabeth Taylor wanted to do it for uh, Luella Parsons or whichever one she wanted, the one that had to, they wouldn't let her do it. <laughs> but uh, now, what about? Because um, I like this too. The um, May September. Did you? Did you I like that? that? I saw that. I saw that. I thought you that, didn't like it as much as I did. I didn't like it as much as you did, but I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, but there were there were just really wonderful films this year. Um, yeah, well, that one didn't speak to you. Or... I liked it. No, mm. Don't misunderstand. No, no, I know. Yeah, yeah. But there was a film called American Fiction that I had heard was a favorite at Toronto. So I put it on my list. And I thought, hmm. But it was wonderful. Jeffrey Wright. Great film. Great film. And interestingly enough, it's a film that had the audience basically laughing at themselves because of the storyline. What, what was that film again? American Fiction. And... Uh, how how did how did that well happen? it's the story of a of a very esoteric writer who teaches at a university and he's very you know straight laced and whatever and one day in frustration you know he writes what he thinks is this and he's he's black and he writes this what he thinks you know horrible street novel that he does it just it's offensive it means to be yeah i'm and guessing and not only offensive but he you know, he said, I know, they want me to write more black, whatever. Anyhow, oh, okay. the book becomes a huge success and what, and the story unfolds from there. Um, and so, and it pokes fun at liberal audiences, you know, but um, it's, it's really well done. And, and does really the audience clever, know that they're laughing at themselves? Many, I'm not sure. Because <laughs> that's what my, that's what I want to know. <laughs> yeah, you know, we didn't, nobody took a poll, but. <laughs> you wouldn't get a, the, suspect, the real answer I from that poll anyway. I suspect most did. Um, there was another, there was a beautiful French film, A Taste of Things, which was two and a half hours of, uh, I mean, lush period, French countryside home and food, constant preparation and eating of food. And even to a non-gourmand like my wife, who I thought was going to come out and say, why would you subject me to that? She said, oh, my God, it looked so good. I would almost eat those things. <laughs> <laughs> De Debbie's not a connoisseur. She, she's a, she likes, you she's know. She's a health, health eater. No. No. She's a burger and fries. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're having a burger tonight. <laughs> yeah. As she puts it, she won't eat anything without a face. So, you know. None of our wonderful local scallops or... or oh, I you know, love scallops. Or, you know, but so even she who is not interested in food the way I am, and which obviously shows, um, love this film. And it's amazing how it says a lot about relationships, how different yeah. different people come together and sure. make everything work, and sure. despite because mm -hmm. it's all about love and kindness and generosity of spirit. 
Because <laughs> you two have been together for like, how long is it? 33 years. Yeah. Yeah. 33 years. I love you both. I, we we're, have a little bit of time. What else would you like to talk about? Well, we could talk about Lily, which is a film about Lily. Oh, Ledbetter. I forgot all about Lily. Um, Lily Ledbetter, who the Equal Pay for Women's legislation was named, is a film. We have it in the can. Uh, we're sort of waiting for the... When, 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 when did you shoot it? Last year. So it's been in the can for how long? Not not that long. We do, did post in the spring and early summer. And who's, who, who's in it? Patricia Clarkson, John oh my Benjamin God, she's Vicky. Fabulous. It's a wonderful, wonderful cast. Beautiful and you, story. You're the, you're the lead producer on this one? No, I'm one of the executive producers on oh, this oh. one. Um, and it's the story of this remarkable woman who had this career in a tire company for years and years. She was... You know, they kept promoting her. They kept giving her better, sh better work, whatever. But as she would train people, men, they would go past her, and she found out that the men doing the same work or less than her were making more, <laughs> and she sued them. Now, this is a woman who had no backup. Okay, so she was up against these huge corporate lawyers. She won every appeal until the Supreme Court, when they threw the case out on a technicality and said she should have sued them sooner. But she didn't know sooner. Ruth Bader Ginsburg said to her, take it to Congress. And Congress enacted legislation. But this is a woman who had nothing and still had, she never got a nickel for any of this. And she is a true hero and it's a really and, and Congress made legislation to yes. protect other people in the future. It was the first thing that Barack Obama signed as president. Oh, into law I love that man. <laughs> so, um, and she's behind this film also. She's thrilled with it. Um, so hopefully that'll come out this year too. <laughs> so, but, but the strike is done though, right? The writer's strike, not the actor's strike. I know people keep telling me what's the hook up, what's the holdup on the actor strike. Do you know? You know, they 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 just had another breakdown in their discussions, and who knows? You know, I'm not in those rooms. I know, because because I I I know the stuff about AI is really vital and it's important. Also, you know, when people think about actors being on strike, they think about the big names who bring in big bucks. But many act working actors aren't in that category. No, I know, I know, I know. They, 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 know. they, they just, you yeah. know, they, they need the gig. And, because uh, we want to put, we want to put Truman in the films too, but we can't even go out for commercials at the moment because... <laughs> right. He has to get an equity card. Well, Tr put, Truman, come here. You can put him on Broadway, it's a different union. Okay, but we want to say hello. Truman wants to say, hello. come here, come on. You're going to say hello to Jane. We're going to get off the air in just a minute. But we want to say hello. This is... Hey, Trina. You want to say hello to everybody? Oh, kisses. Thank you. This is the best part of being here. Oh, very sweet. Jane, it's the first time we've had Truman on the air. <laughs> what a good boy. Okay. Was that too much for you? No, not the least. I missed I got, that. I, got I, I got missed that. So you're going to come back when we have... More to talk about the mother. Yes. And I can't believe, I believe I sl Lily slipped my mind there for a second. Well, I mean, it's here. We talked about I, it. I made notes just before we started. I didn't look at my notes. <laughs> it's okay. like. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that too when it's ready to come out. I adore Jessica Lang too, and she's just fabulous on the stage. Yeah. She's fabulous in film. Everything she does is interesting. Yeah. Um, but, well, uh, she's going to And Vogel too. I mean, like, I was, you have the best stuff. Thank you. Thank you for coming. It's always a pleasure, Patrick. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs>